morning again. I already had a kind of an interesting start of my morning. I, uh, I was coming driving in from St. Joe on 150, just east of Mayview. I don't even usually take 150. I don't even know why I took 150. I used to go through the country. But I'm driving away and I'm kind of running through my thoughts of kind of what I was going to share with you guys today. And I look way up ahead and there's these three tall, big white crosses, just shiny as can be. And I thought, well, look, wonder who put those crosses up there. There's three tall, white, shiny crosses. And I thought, wonder what that's all about. And uh, as, as I get closer, I realize it's a real cloudy day and there's one little hole in the clouds and the sun is shining on the three uh, pole, the, the high wire poles, the telephone poles, and from a distance it looked like crosses, and it was it was bright, shining, and it was only three of them. They were all that, that the sun was shining on those. I get up there to them cross the, to them poles. I'm, oh man, the last of the day. I felt I felt really dumb because I thought somebody had put up some big old crosses out there. <laughs> but you know, from that time on for just east of Mayview all the way in, I kept thinking, was, was that God trying to tell me something? Was that, was that just a coincidence? You know, was I just dumb thinking about it? Or I kept thinking, what was God trying to tell me? You know, the whole way in, these three shiny crosses get there. I kept thinking, sure, he's trying to tell me something. To be honest with you, I never figured it out. I didn't know what God was. If it was God trying to tell me something, He did, He didn't get the message across. But because uh, I still didn't figure out what the message was. Uh, let's go ahead and uh, uh, open with prayer. Dear Lord, I just want to thank you so much for uh, the opportunity to share your word. But Lord, I I ask that uh, this worship service, what is what we've done so far, and what we're about to do, is that you look down and you it's it's a joy to you to watch us worship you because. Is that's what we're here to do is to worship you lord i ask you that uh, that you give me guidance uh, that i ask whatever words come from me they don't come from me they come from you and whatever scriptures i re share they come from you so lord please guide me through this this sermon and, and we just pray again that our worship service is a blessing to you in the name i pray amen okay so a couple weeks ago two or three weeks ago, um, a celebrity uh, went on TV and had talked about our vice president, Vice President Pence. And, and she said that, that uh, you know, he doesn't just pray to Jesus. Jesus talks to him. And uh, uh, then she, what she said, she had had contact with, with, with Vice President Pence. So uh, I don't know what context he said, or how he said, or what he said, but but then another celebrity picks it up on her her uh, talk show, and she goes on. You probably know who I'm talking about. But she goes on and just makes fun of this whole story of, of our vice president uh, speaking to Jesus. She said it's fine, but just anybody hearing Jesus, she even went on to say it must be mental if he if he thinks he's, if Jesus is talking to him. And I've been thinking about this for two or three weeks, and um, and I've wondered, how many out here speak to Jesus? How many out here speak to Jesus? How many out here think Jesus speaks to them? Well, you know that's what I thought, but you know the way that the the, the talk show went, well, then raise your hands again, everyone who thinks Jesus speaks to them. The way the talk show went, every one of you guys are mental. Okay. That's what that's what she said. That's what she said about our, our vice president. Um, now I'm not going to say that you're mental, but that's what the, the talk show person uh, said. Um, and I've thought about this, and I thought, I wonder what what our vice president Pence thought. But more importantly, what I what I think if somebody's making fun of me and really ridiculing me because I said Jesus speaks to me. Um, let's first turn to. Uh, to, to Matthew, one of the, beat, the last beatitude, Matthew 5, speaking 5.11, 5.11, um, 
It's the last beatitude, and it says, uh, Blessed are you when people insult you, persecute you, and falsely say all kinds of evil against you because of me. Rejoice and be glad, because great is your reward in heaven. For in the same way they persecute the prophets who were before you. So, to start with, I hope that person would make fun of me. I hope that person would make fun of each one of you that, that, that believe they're speaking of Jesus. And I'm glad that person made fun of our vice president. And why I say that? Because the scriptures say, blessed are you when people insult you. Our vice president is blessed because that talk show host seemed to want to go on and on, go on about him, Jesus talking to him. We are blessed when people are making fun of us. But that's not, the question isn't, isn't just, does Jesus talk to us? It's how does how that happen? How does that happen? And uh, uh, the question is not just does it, but how does it happen? Let, let's turn to a very familiar, familiar scripture. Probably, well, I might not even have to turn to it. Galatians 2.20. Somebody out there probably hasn't memorized. Galatians 2.20. No longer... I that live, but all right, I guess we don't have to memorize. Let's turn. Let's turn to it. Um, it in turn to it. First uh, Corinthians uh, two twenty. It says, uh, "I have been crucified in Christ, and I no longer I live, but Christ lives in me. The life that I live in a in in the body." I live by faith in the Son of God. Again, let me read the first part. I have been crucified. I have been crucified with Christ, and I no longer live, but Christ lives in me. Okay. First off, with that being said, as Christians, with Christ living in us, if we need to go talk to Jesus, or if we want Jesus to talk to us, where do we go? He's right there. You know, we don't have to. We don't have to go to the temple and wait for the priest to to hear what God has to say. We don't have to come to church on Sunday morning just to hear Jesus. We don't have to. We don't have to go to to, to our pastor who's not here anyway um, to uh, um, talk to Jesus. But he lived. He's right here. So if you truly want to talk to Jesus, where do you go? You're there. You're where Jesus is right there with you. Scripture says it. I, you know, it's, I'm not saying this. It says, I have been crucified with Christ and I no longer live. But Christ lives in me. So anybody makes fun of you if you're talking to Jesus, you talk, you're talking to yourself. You're talking right here. Jesus is right here. There's no if, and, or buts about it. If, if you're walking with somebody and you're walking constantly with this person, are you gonna you, you're are you never gonna talk to that person? Is that person never gonna talk to you? No, you're gonna have a conversation. Sooner or later you're gonna have a conversation. I don't talk to too much. Uh, Donna knows when we're out, I don't do a lot of talking, but we have a conversation. Um, they talk, you know, if somebody's with you. Well, Jesus is right here. If I'm walking over here and I'm talking to Jesus, He's talking with me. He's with me. So yes, I talk to Jesus and He talks to me because He's as I'm taking my walk down, as I'm at work, and if I'm if I'm here at church or if I'm on the golf course, I can talk to Jesus and He's going to talk to me because He's right here with us. So there's. Should be no if and or no no question about that. Let's turn to to uh, Romans eight and give us a little bit of insight here. Uh, Romans eight. Sorry. Acts. There it is. Romans eight, uh, verse five and six, and then I'm going to skip down to twelve. But in Romans 8, verse 5, it says, Those who live according to the sinful nature 
have their minds set on what that nature desires. But those who live according to the Spirit have their minds set on what the Spirit desires. So, so one of the things that, we, that the Scriptures tell us, as long as we have our minds set properly, set on the right things, we're going to have our minds set on what, excuse me, us, yeah, well, according to the Spirit, excuse me, those who live according to, I'm sorry, those who live according to sinful nature will have their minds set on that sinful, but those who live in accordance with the Spirit have their minds set on the Spirit desire, what the Spirit desires. So, as long as we have our minds set right, we have our minds set on what the Spirit desires. And if we have our minds set on what the Spirit desires, who's, who's, who's doing the talking? Jesus is doing the talking. There's no, no, no doubt about that. And Jesus has given us some promises about that. Let's turn to uh, uh, John, John 14. John 14, the 15 through 19. It starts out in 15, as John 14, and in verse 15 says, If you love me, you will obey what I command. And I will ask the Father, and he will give you another counselor to be with you forever. The Spirit of truth, the Word of Cannot, excuse me, the, the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. But you know him, for he lives with you and will and will be in you. So that scripture is a promise from Jesus. That was Jesus speaking, that we're gonna con we're gonna have always the counselor within us. The counselor within us. Is, is going to be there when? He's going to be with you forever. But here's the key, and here's what's going on in the world. It says, the world cannot accept him because it neither sees him nor knows him. So, is it any wonder that this talk show host or anybody making fun of you when you share that, that Jesus is talking to you, is it any wonder that they don't understand. Why don't they understand? Why are they making fun of me? Why are they why are they insulting me? Why are they insulting you? Because of it's so obvious to you. The reason why they can't understand is that, that it says the world cannot accept him because they neither see him nor know him. If they don't know Jesus, they don't see Jesus. If somebody says Jesus is speaking to me. They don't know him. They don't see him. The obvious reaction is to insult the person. To, to you're crazy. You you you've got mental problems, or whatever. But we know the difference. We know because we are not of the world. We have, and what's the promise of who's going to be with us? A counselor. What does a counselor do? He guides you. He helps you with any troubled times. He helps you to make decisions. And so within us, we have a promise of forever having the Holy Spirit within us, which is Jesus talking. And Jesus has promised that that, that Holy Spirit, that voice in us, is going to be there forever to counsel us. But the world will not see it. The world can't see it because they don't recognize Him. Um... But Christians are guided by Jesus, um, and in John, in John three, in John three uh, thirty one through thirty six, John three thirty one through thirty six, it says, "The one who comes from above is above all. The one who is born." from the earth belongs to the earth and speaks as one from the earth. The one who comes from heaven is above all. He testifies to what he has seen and heard, but no one accepts his testimony. The man who has accepted it 
has certified that God is truthful. For the one from God who has, who, excuse me, for the one, this is verse 34, for the one whom God has sent speaks the word of God, of God, gives a spirit without limits. The Father loves the Son and, the, and has placed everything in His hands. Whoever believes in the Son has eternal life, but whoever rejects the Son will not see life, for God's wrath remains in Him. But let me go back up to 34. 34 again, it says, For the one whom God has sent speaks the words of God, for God gives the Spirit without limit. So, let's take that and see what's happened. Jesus has come in us as the Holy Spirit. The Spirit is has what with Him? What is He? It says, for, for God has sent Excuse me. For God has sent and speaks the word of God. For God gives the spirit without limit. The word of God is where? Right here. Is right here is the word of God. Right there is the word of God. Right there is the word of God. Right there is the word of God. Jerry's holding up. The, you don't even have to hold it up, Jerry. You know where it's at. It's right inside you. It's right inside you. The word of God is promised. <laughs> to be here counseling us with no limits. We cannot limit that. God, Jesus has given us the counselor within us with no limits. And, uh, <clears throat> and, and so we can speak the word of God because it's right here. And when we, when we say, I'm speaking to God, and God speaks to me. Well, God don't have very far to go to get the word, does he? The word is right here. And, and Jesus has put the word here in the Holy Spirit. Let's again reemphasize that in 1 John. In 1 John. I can get there. I know it's there somewhere. Lost my place. But in 1 John 2.14, I've lost it. There it is. Slid down. All right, John. Uh, two, 1 John 2.14. Uh, it says, I write to you, fathers, because you have known him who is from the beginning. I write to you, young men, because of the strong of the strong and the word of God lives in you and you have overcome the evil one. The word of God lives where? Yes. In us. The Holy Spirit is the word of God in us. So, so anytime anybody says, how does Jesus speak to you? He speaks to you right here. It's right here. I've come to an aha how important it is to be to have to listen to the Holy Spirit. My aha is this: the apostles. Have you ever, at all, thought the apostles walked with Jesus day in, day out, three years? And have you ever, in the stories, thought, how can they not see it? How can they not see what's going on? Let's take some some quick examples. Um, when Jesus um, fed five thousand. <coughs> What was the apostles' reaction at the beginning of that? Uh, we don't have any food. What are we going to do? What are we going to do, Jesus? Let's send them all away. Yeah. And did, did you ever think, wait a minute, these men walk day in, day out with Jesus. Why? There should have been no doubt. Oh, we got a little bit of food. Jesus can do something with this. I don't know what he's going to do. But no, I've always wondered, why don't these men get it? Um, how about when Tom, when uh, no, when the apostles were afraid to storm? Jesus is in the boat. They're in the boat. <clears throat> big storm, big storm. Jesus is in the boat with them. Do you think the boat's going over? Oh, wait a minute. Their reaction is, oh boy, you know, help, help, help! This is horrible. They walk with him day in, day out. Why did they not just say, "Hey, Jesus, we got a problem. Take care of it"? They knew he could take care of it. 
the, their reaction was just like the world. What's going on? Doubting Thomas. Thomas walked with him through death, up to the death. He rises. He's told these men time and time again, he's going to rise. <coughs> he comes to Thomas, and Thomas goes, I don't believe this. I don't believe this at all. And sure enough, he has to be proved that that's it. And I'm going, wait a minute. You walked three years, day in, day out with this guy. He's told you over and over he's going to do this. And they didn't get it. Um, Peter. You know what Peter did after he died? What did Peter do? Denied him three times. You know? Peter walked <coughs> three years with Jesus. Day in. Slept with him. Day in. Day out. Everything. And dies. And people say, oh, you know this, Jesus. <laughs> I don't know, Jesus. I don't know, Jesus. How could that happen? How could that happen? Well, I've come to an aha. And, and it's one of the last things after Jesus rose. He rose and he's having a meal with him. In Acts. He's having a meal with him after, after he rose. Let's turn to Acts. And this is my aha for the day. An aha, if you don't get, know, there's some Jack Rampelberg used to preach here. He, he always had me look for the aha moments. Uh, an aha moment is when you all of a sudden the light comes on. Um, so in Acts, I find Acts. There we go. Okay, Acts uh, 1, 13, well, excuse me, 1, 3 and 7. Uh, this is Jesus. He would already died. He rose. And in, starting in 3, it says, after, after his suffering, which is his, his suffering is death, right? After his suffering, he showed him to these, himself to these <coughs> men and gave many convincing proofs that he w was alive. He appeared to them over a period of 40 days and spoke about the kingdom of God. On one occasion, this is what I want to get to, on one occasion while he was eating with them, get it, he'd already died. He rose and he's eating with them. He gave them this command. Do not leave Jerusalem, but wait for the gift my father promised, which you have heard me speak about. The, and John <coughs> baptized me in water, but in a few days you will be baptized with the Holy Spirit. So when they, when they met together, they asked him, Lord, are you at that time at this time going to restore the kingdom of Israel? And he said, It is not for you to know the time and dates, and the Father has set by his own authority. But you will receive the power of the Holy Spirit comes upon you, and you will be a witness in Jerusalem and in all Judea. Samaria and to the ends of the earth. So here he is sitting there after he died and what it was instructions. Instructions was to wait in Jerusalem. Well, be honest with you, if I was the planning of this whole deal, they're about to start to build the church, the, the, the Christian church, the church that God wanted on earth. And if I was planning this whole deal, I would be sitting with the 12 and giving them their assignments. You go here, you go here, you go here. Jesus' assignment was go in Jerusalem and wait. And why did they have to wait? What were they waiting for? They were waiting for the Holy Spirit to be poured out upon them. Um, I'm going to kind of, instead of reading it, basically Pentecost happens. They go to, they go to Jerusalem and wait. And the Holy Spirit pours out on it. The apostles just pours out on them. And prior to that, they're going, what's going on? Are you going to bring the kingdom of God to me or not? That's really what the reaction was. The reaction was, I don't quite, we don't understand. We don't understand what's going on. Why? They wait in Jerusalem. The Holy Spirit pours out on them. And guess what happens? Peter starts preaching. Peter starts prophesying. The apostles start doing the miracles. Start doing all the miracles. If you can read on in, in Acts, they start doing all the same miracles that Jesus did. He, the church starts from 5,000, 3,000 over here, building up. Why? What's the difference? What's the difference between what's going on, Jesus? 
I've walked with you three years. I've watched you three years, but I don't know what's going on. To sitting in Jerusalem and preaching the word. And if you read that, what, what Peter preached, it was a powerful preaching. It was some prophesying that you had never heard before. It was powerful. And the difference was he had to wait for the Holy Spirit. Had to wait to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Once Peter was filled with the Holy Spirit, there was no more. Oh, I don't know him. I don't know him. It was all of a sudden Peter standing up and preaching some of the best stuff ever. The church's foundation was built on what Peter was preaching after he got the Holy Spirit. So, as we think about that, do we Let's go read one more scripture here in 2 Corinthians. In 2 Corinthians, the fourth chapter, verse 1 through 6. Therefore, since, since through God's mercy we have his ministry, this ministry, we do not lose heart. Rather, we have re renounced secret and shameful ways. We do not use deception, nor do we distort the word of God. On the contrary, by setting forth the truth, plainly we commend ourselves and every man's conscience in the sight of God and every and even in the gospel. Now here's the part I want you to catch. And even if the gospel is veiled, it is veiled to those who are, per, are perishing. For God of this age has blinded the minds of unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel uh, for the glory of Christ who is, who is in the image of God. Why do we why would we expect the world to understand that Jesus speaks to me? Why would we expect the world to understand that Jesus speaks to our vice president? Why would we expect the world to understand that Jesus speaks to each one of you? When it says, God himself says, and God of his age has blinded the minds of the unbelievers so that they cannot see the light of the gospel of the glory of Christ. No doubt about it. There ain't no way on earth they can understand that Jesus speaks to me. That Jesus speaks to any of us. Because they're blinded to it. God has blinded them to it. And it's our duty to share what's in us. To share that word and to, to unbelievers until that veil starts lifting. That veil starts lifting. And sooner or later, as we share the word, the veil gets lifted off of the unbelievers. All of a sudden, that person that's making fun of you, make fun of the vice president, make fun of me, make fun of anybody else, all of a sudden, aha, I understand. I understand how Jesus can talk to us. So, let's not let history um, cloud things up for us. Let's not let the world cloud things up. The world says, it's unbelievable. In conclusion, what we need to, be, to understand is that Jesus has given us a lifetime forever unlimited power of the Holy Spirit to live within us to speak the gospel. You know, sometimes people say, well, I just don't understand the Bible. I just don't understand the Bible. But you know what? You don't really have to understand the Bible totally. Don't get me wrong, you should be in the Bible, you should be trying to understand and everything else, but in reality, Jesus, the Word of God is already in you. So, if you don't understand the Bible, just, just dig deep. Get in tune with the Holy Spirit. By getting in tune with the Holy Spirit, I ask you today. Real quick, basically to get in tune with the Holy Spirit, you need to pray continuously, you need to, to stay in the Word of God, and try to consult with the Holy Spirit when? At church? No. Continuously. Yeah. Everybody wants, how can you continuously pray? That's what continuously praying is. 
is consulting the Holy Spirit at work, at church, family time, uh, out on the golf course, wherever you're at, uh, we need to stay in tune with the Holy Spirit because it's the greatest power ever given by any anybody to anyone. That is for Jesus Christ to live with me and for me to be able to speak to God and for you to be able to speak to God, but more importantly, for Jesus to be able to speak to you. Right here. He's doing it. He, he can do it. You can do it. You just open your heart. Stay in tune for him, and Jesus will speak to you. Will it be an audible sound? I don't know. Will it be will it, will it be sunlight shining on three three telephone poles? I don't know. I don't know. Uh, <laughs> But he will be speaking to you. <coughs> He'll be speaking to you. Um, and if we open up our heart, stay in tune with him, let the world make fun of us because we are so blessed if that ever happens. Because the scriptures say, blessed are those who are ridiculed, persecuted. Let them on. Bring them on. Bring them on. That's, that's the blessing that, this, that as Christians we can, we, can, we can take it on because we have that. Let's pray. Dear Lord, I just ask that that anybody here that doesn't have that that isn't utilizing the Holy Spirit within them to to the best of their knowledge, that they try their best to get in tune with the Holy Spirit because it's so powerful. We see, Lord, that you gave the Holy Spirit to the apostles, and the world was changed, the church was built, and th and what we have today comes from that that moment of you pouring out the Holy Spirit. So Lord, I ask you, I ask you that each one of us understand within us is that Holy Spirit. Within us, we are speaking to Jesus. And within us, Jesus is speaking <coughs> to us. And let's just utilize that. And if we do that, the world can't stop us. They can't make fun of us. Or they can. They can ridicule us. But all it is is a blessing to us. In your name I pray. Amen. Uh, let's... Uh, Stand and if you uh, felt the Holy Spirit move within you, I hope you can uh, just utilize that power. Just weep from there.